how far is it from the control line? That becomes the set point. Right now, the process variable is at 6736. That is, if you take it now like this, if you draw it horizontal, no, it is not at 673. I think you'll have to run it to get it. Uh, no, or this is this the one? Six, seven? No, you'll have to run it to, 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 to check. But set point, what the con is means, the controller is trying to estimate how far it must be from the uh, control line. Process variable is, where is it now currently? What HISIS does is that based on this expression, it estimates, uh, it is estimating the head also. And based on the difference, in this case, 6736 minus 5549, let's just assume it is, it is so much. The difference is 1,200 meter cube per hour. So let's say the operating point touched the um, search control line, what the anti-search controller is doing is it estimates how much flow should I recycle. If I have to recycle so much flow, how much should I open the anti-search fan? That is what this is doing. Set point is how far is it away from the control line. Process variable is where is it currently. With the co coefficients, you're estimating how much should be the head. And based on the distance, the anti-search controller decides what is the difference in the amount of how much recycle flow do I need to recycle? If I have to recycle so much flow, how much should, here in this case, OP is the valve opening. This, this percentage is actually the ASV opening. It will decide how much the valve has to open. Now, this controller uh, pa parameters, PV max and PV min, because the, 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 the minimum amount of flow that can flow inside is the least uh, the, for the lowest speed, left-hand side curve, so it is about 2637, whereas the highest on this end is about uh, 9,118, so I would put 9,118. This PV min and PV max is not the surge lines, uh, it is not the surge lines of flow rate, not this number. It is this number from here to here. So this is the region, not, only, not so much this whole region. PV max and PV min. So it will be 9,000 something that you have to enter. Regarding the tuning, you can take it for, um, you can take the values for a flow, flow controller, whatever you put, I think two and point one or something, because what I used to do was I put two and point one. And after the, after I finish the model, then what I do is I do a stability test and I keep changing the KC and tau. I know only the trial and error method. I know of no other method. So try to fix, uh, you can use, uh, I mean, you can use, you can, you, can, you can fix the TI and go on increasing the KC till you see some oscillations. Uh, that is, you have to draw a, a plot. So oscillations means what happens is this point will keep moving like this. It will keep moving like this. You have to see at what point the movement stops and then you again, and then what you do is you try to increase the gain that way. So that way you, st you try to reduce the amount of oscillation. It, it takes a while, but when I do my simulations, what, uh, I, I go on, uh, I use the trial and error method. That's the way I do it. Next, even scheduler. Mm, where is it? Uh, I'll explain about the even scheduler and then we will do, we'll run two cases to compare the, you know, the curve which goes down, isn't it? Sir, a normal shutdown. We can see if we reduce the CV and uh, for the original CV. Okay. So in, even scheduler, the purpose is to automate the whole thing. Now to automate, this is a case of normal shutdown. Now in this model, if you observe, you have a pressure controller, which gives a set point to the speed controller. So depending on the, so if the pressure is too high here, you have to reduce the speed. The pressure is too low on the discharge, you increase the speed. So when I'm doing a normal shutdown, what happens is that if I trip the compressor, um, because, because during a shutdown, I want the compressor to be independent. I don't want it to, um, to, to be influenced by anything else. The next thing is, let's say the compressor was stripped. And, the, and when, when the compressor has stripped, what happens is that the uh, controller is still trying to, because in a normal shutdown, what we do is, let's say we open the ASV completely, 100% open, and then we trip the compressor. If the search controller is still functioning, then what happens is 
as the compressor is starting to coast down, this controller will try to keep closing the anti-surge valve. We don't want that to happen. So we must disconnect the controller from messing around with the anti-surge valve, the pressure controller from messing around with the compressor. We don't want any speed control when the compressor is coasting down. So taking all of this, what we do is mode change. First, the pressure controller, you switch it off. The speed controller, you change it to manual because I'm going to manually shut, shut down the compressor and then you shut down the surge controller also. Then the ASV opens. You say at what time you want the ASV to open. In this case, I said, please open it 100%. And then you have to trip the compressor. When you trip the compressor, okay, at this I'll explain what it is, but before that, and then you trip the compressor by, by because it's a cascaded controller, not this one. If you look at, SC, this is taking a signal from PC. So that's why it's cascaded. If you look at the model here, the compressor, the PC is giving the set point to the control valve. This, so the output of this uh, PC becomes the set point of the speed controller. So we are, to, so we don't, <coughs> to shut it down, oh yeah. Oh no, not this button, oh yeah, yeah. To shut it down, we trip the compressor. So we open that, uh, normally what we do is we open the controller and press zero on the OP to shut it down. Whereas we are automating it here. And then we close the block valves, suction and discharge block valves. If, if it, is, um, it is a shutdown, it is at 100, we want it to go to zero. Now, what is this friction loss factor that I put for compressor trip? Now the thing is when you shut down a compressor, the speed does not go to zero immediately. It takes a while for it to go to zero, and it follows a certain a certain certain path, which is um, you have the Excel sheet, sir. Yeah. So what I have provided here is an Excel sheet. If you look at that uh, PDF file, the second tutorial is how to make this. So the compressor speed will not go to zero. Uh, yeah. The compressor speed will not go to zero immediately. It takes a while, it takes a parabolic shape before it goes to zero. Uh, if you look at this graph, this curve will never touch uh, the x-axis. It is, a, 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 it is a, what's the word, asymptotic. It uh, means this curve will touch the x-axis only at infinity. Because in the, because the expression that I, I gave, that, that I put there, the nature of this, the curve itself is that it will never touch, um, it will never touch the x-axis until it reaches infinity. So what I've done is that I've used a convergence criteria. Now, a couple of things you need to know. This is a theoretical estimate. In reality, the speed will be even, so in this case, if I say 115 seconds, maybe in reality, it might even come to go to zero in only 75 or 80 seconds. It's difficult to say. So the way I have modeled that, so you need some amount of field data to model this. So I put a, a convergence criteria. So in this case, let's say, when the difference in speed as it is coasting down, the difference is not more than 0.1, it is fine. So suppose let's say I, I say point, oh sorry. Let's say I put 0.5 uh, instead of this thing. Then it comes down even faster. You see the difference is, so this is not realistic. But somewhere here, it looks like the speed is coming to, to, to total halt, you can see. So the red line is the change in slope. When the change in slope is not changing so much, in reality, uh, I don't have that, okay. The curve will slowly go to zero here. But this curve mathematically goes to zero only at infinity. So these numbers are conservative, but you can use it in case you are doing, let's say, because either you ask the manufacturer or you have some field data. If you have some field data, you can, this convergence criteria itself, you can play around to tell how long does it take for the speed to come down. And based on that, so then what we do is, the idea is to impose this speed, this uh, drop in speed into HISIS. So HISIS gives, sorry, if you can, if you can open HISIS. So what we can do is we can use a friction loss factor. Using the friction loss factor, now this is trial and error. 
So in my case, I started with one, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, until I came to five, then I kept playing around with the number and I put 5.3. So you will have to manually play around with this friction loss factor to try as much as possible because whatever coast down curve that HISIS is generating, you have to try your best to make it match as close as possible to, um, to that Excel sheet, whatever you're seeing. So from Excel sheet, uh, where we find this 5.3? No, no, this Excel sheet is, no, in HISIS, it is trial and error method. Okay. You, like this, what you have to do is, you have to start like this, okay, you start with, let's say, you start with, uh, let's say you start with uh, 0.5, and then you run the simulation. You cross mm -hmm. the cross check the results with HISIS. You see, uh, HISIS will give you speed versus time, no? You take mm -hmm. that and put it in Excel and uh, see if both of them are matching. Not matching, okay, get back here. Again, you try one, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, 5.3. 